This ties together our whole show very nicely because we started with Ray Dalio of Bridgewater talking about slower global growth, downgrading his forecasts of right. deleveraging global macro. And then you had Jeremy Hill talking about And then we had Jeremy Hill from more, Stockton. More global stuff. So it, it's easiest to talk about global macro funds, I think, by what they aren't. They aren't the traditional arbitraged hedge funds that take advantage of the idea that two securities historically have a specific kind of pricing relationship. One of them gets a little bit out of whack, so you go long one, short the other, and you profit when they come back into historical norms. Instead, these are the guys who are playing exactly these kinds of trends, you know, these large global trends. Like, for example, uh, I heard some global macro guys talking this morning when they saw the Richmond Fed uh, numbers come mm -hmm. out. Everybody said, uh oh, uh, chances of QE3 just went up and they might put some, some trades on for that. So these are the sort of trends that they're talking about QE3 or not QE3, the euro. What else are you hearing? Uh, weather, of course, is a huge one right now. And in fact, uh, I think you're even running some Bloomberg headlines uh, saying that people are dumping gold to get into soybeans and corn because of the weather related. Jeremy patterns. Hill said that there's a big speculative position building in wheat. Yes, exactly so. And th there's obviously, so weather, it's actually interesting. If you go into a global market, macro fund, a lot of times you'll see huge numbers of weather maps up on the wall, which isn't exactly what most people expect when they go to visit a, a hedge fund. But currencies is another you know, very big one. How, how hard is the Chinese landing going to be? Things like that. Things that I talk about every day. So, exactly. So how do, how do the investors approach this from an allocation standpoint? So this, I think, really is the critical, critical question here. As we said at the top, it's these kinds of funds aren't the statistically driven classic arbitrage funds. These are more like supply demand type equations. You're really trying to guess where things are going to go. You're picking a trend. So those and these kinds of things tend to do well, global macro, in times of crisis or abnormal markets like we have now with zero interest but rate policies. But not necessarily doing too hot right now. I mean, we pulled up the Bloomberg Global Macro Index of hedge funds underperforming. Jeremy Hill says it's about getting the timing right. It's about it's also getting about getting the manager right. Like everything in life, uh, you know, there True. are better there are better global macro managers and worse global macro managers, and you know you can't just go into the strategy and expect to do well automatically. But uh, historically speaking, they have done much better than the traditional kinds of statistical, you know, mean reversion hedge funds during abnormal markets and during times of crisis. And what you want to do as an investor, I think, is look at having some kinds of funds that do well in panic type situations and some types of funds that do well in normal market situation.